Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra deck guide. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys Endure Spiders. We'll go through the deck summary, Mulligan, and some quick tips. This is patch 1.7. Shall we kick on and talk about the deck? Uh, they Who Endure is the play around, all round build card, essentially. This is an aggro deck which has the ability to, towards the later half of the game to slap down They Who Endure, who has Overwhelm and gets buffed up each time a unit dies, so you can slap your opponent in the face. I'm sure by now a lot of players are aware of this deck, but if you are new, basically you can either do that by slapping them in the face with Endure, or you can also play Atrocity to kill the Endure and then put that damage into their face. Uh, very much an aggro deck, Shell with the combo finisher. This list in particular, which I will share a deck link to in the description, uh, features one Sejuani in replacement, which was usually uh, three Elise and three Callista. Now Elise is best when played on turn two, uh, but I think unironically, like the best play on turn two for this deck is going to be using Curse Keeper. So you can start to combo your like uh, Blighted Caretakers, your Glimpse Beyond, Haunted Relics, and your Bark Beast, etc. But still, at least is a really decent two drop all around, but it's not like the real core deck build, right? The real big play is Curse Keeper. So trimming down one Elise for having a Sejuani towards the later half of the game is actually pretty cool. And I like the way this list was built. Going down the list, we have two Atrocities, which is going to be a game finisher which can sometimes not necessarily be used on Endure. You can sometimes get enough face damage that you can like use it on Callistas or even Sejuani's. Even like sometimes uh, the Cursed Keeper's unit that comes back. But without further ado, let's continue on. Two Navigate Collectors, when another ally dies, drain one from the enemy Nexus. This is a very good staple card for this list at the moment, especially since we have so much token generation. You can sometimes slap down Navigate Collector as an alternate win condition as well. The amount of alternate win conditions in this deck is actually quite insane three fear of the north for pushing more damage especially relevant when you start to play your early game and your opponent can't block everything you can sometimes push through fear of the north for extra damage or get some unfavorable trades three times callista i've seen three allies die goes along really well with this deck it is not too hard to level up callista and can be another win condition in itself three times blighted kill take uh three times blighted caretaker sorry for my english Kill an ally to summon two saplings. This will give you two saplings. Very powerful on turn three if you are attacking on odds, without a doubt. But outside of that, you have to be kind of cautious with how you play this. And think about the right times to go on with it. Because it's, it's as easy as a curve out and play it on uh, attacking odds and kill unit, hit your opponent's stuff. But if you're not on attacking odds, you really have to think about this card and don't keep it in the mulligan unless you've got something to activate it, like some sort of curve, right? Three times Vile Feast, pretty good all around uh, Shadow Isles card. One times Haunted Relic, some lists will use two. I think one's just fine. I think uh, in replacement of Sejuani, it's okay. Haunted Relic is most powerful. Oftentimes when you play alongside Callista, you can get an instant level up. But outside of that, it could be kind of a less valuable card. But every now and then you can play it on your opponent's attacking turn to set up a bunch of chump blockers. So don't hesitate to do that. To protect some face damage, three times Glimpse Beyond is a Shadow Wild staple for card draw, especially in a deck like this where you have so many units. Two times Elise, uh, two, three times Curse Keeper. So this is actually probably like the other half of the build around card. So you've got the top end in terms of, um, you've got the top end in terms of They Who Endure. Towards the lower end, this is going to be a huge power card. Sets up a lot of activators and just does a lot of crazy stuff. So when this dies, you get the 4-3 body. And it's also a great target for Blighted Caretaker. That's going to be your cookie cutter uh, early game. Three times Avarosian Century to keep the gas going. It's a decent two drop. It's kind of like the Shadow Assassin of Freehold. It just fits into a lot of lists. You get to draw some cards. It's a unit that dies. It's also another target for Blighted Caretaker, which is not too bad either. This list is going to have three Omen Hawk as well because Freehold reasons. Three times Bark Beast because oftentimes you'll be able to have a ally die in front of it, which will give it a buff to 3-3. Three, three. And two times Ravenous Butcher as a final way to kind of activate your board. That wraps up the list. Shall we jump across and talk about the mulligan? So the mulligan for this deck is going to be quite straightforward. I will say one thing that Curse Keeper 100% of the time is going to be a keep. This activates lots of other cards in your deck. So if you ever see Curse Keeper, this is 100% keep. You might even keep two if you have it. Outside of that, the, ideally hand, the ideal hand you are looking for is something along the lines of like Bark Beast into Curse Keeper into Blight Caretaker. Especially on attacking odds, it's very powerful. On attacking evens, a hand like that is still reasonable. Uh, but however, for Blight Caretaker, you'd only ideally keep this if you had a curve. So even if you don't have Curse Keeper in the opening hand, 
You can keep your Omen Hawk into your Elise, into your uh, Black Caretaker, and that should be fine. I'd argue you could probably even consider keeping Bark Beast for the similar reasons, except for Bark Beast requires a little bit more setup. So it's more of a like alternate alternate way of uh, Mulligan. So with Bark Beast, you can kind of go for the Curse Keeper Butcher Bark Beast opening hand, would be very powerful all around. Similar, if you don't have the Curse Keeper, you can go like kind of like Sentry alongside the Bark Beast and Butcher, that's also quite strong. But then you kind of like run out of gas really quickly. The ideal hand, as I said, is going to be like Omen Hawk into Curse Keeper into Black Caretaker. But if not, just think about what match you'll be versing. If you're versing aggro, it might be worthwhile keeping Vile Feast or just keeping any units in general. If you're versing like control decks, you might consider keeping cards like Callista as well. Um, outside of that, you probably don't keep anything from the four mana above. I can't think of any reasons why you keep this in the opening hand. There might be a rare case scenario where you've got a really good curve, like one, two, three, and then you have Netherglade Collector because we only have two copies of it. Against aggro, you probably want to keep Netherglade Collector if you have a really good curve because that card's going to be like a game changer for you. And against control, you might consider keeping the Haunted Relic alongside the Callista in the opening hand. It's going to give you a pretty effective way to level Callista, depending on what list they might be ver versing. Like they might be able to clear Callista, but it gives you a chance of it. In the end though, no matter what matchup, ideally the 1, 2, and 3 drop is going to be the most strongest and Blight Caretaker is going to be your go-to. I will recommend that Vile Feast, although it is 2 mana and it looks like a really juicy keep, oftentimes it's quite weak, so you really have to think about the matchup. I think it's most powerful against uh, aggro, but outside of that, I honestly think you're worthwhile considering to kick this to look for uh, a better, stronger cards, more valuable cards. A Glimpse Beyond is also a considerable keep against control as well, especially against Ezreal decks. Um, that should hopefully wrap up the Mulligan Guide. The last thing I will say is that this deck used to be very easy to play because they who endure used to cost 6 mana. So if for anybody who has played Endure in the past and maybe wants to return to Endure and how you end up on this video, um, it still plays pretty much the same. The one thing you have to consider though is really tracking your mana more than you have before and also tracking how buffed up Endure is, that's also going to be quite relevant. Um, because Ash Shejuani is a powerful deck in the meta right now, and when you're versing it, they actually have a way of interrupting it. Even though it's kind of, I think it's a good matchup for us, but they do have a way of interrupting it, and you just have to kind of play around it a bit. So kind of think about when the Ash is attacking, if you're playing Endure to the field, they can sometimes calling strike it following up, or if you're about to slap it onto a board, um, they could also do like a harsh wins as you go to attack with it. So you have to kind of um, play around stuff that can interact with your Endure because if you have alternative plays it might it sometimes might be better to do that I think I've seen hands where you could simply just play Endure and hit them in the face for a lot of damage but you also might just be better off playing like a wider board or something so you've just got to think about that um but outside of that the deck's pretty simple guys like any other tips I can think about um Sejuani is not something that we're really focusing on leveling up don't kind of like go out of your way to try and get the uh, procs on Sejuani that isn't going to help you too much. Is this just like a replacement for Elise as a bigger, beefier body that can sometimes do like the Frostbite and the vulnerable stuff and set up even better trades? So don't get baited too much by Sejuani. It's just a big unit. Um, also with a Netherglade Collector, um, if you're playing into decks that are using Twisted Fate, look for opportunities where you think you can kind of have a wide board and consider at what point you should drop Netherglade Collector to the field because if you get a chance to you can sometimes play it before they use their board removal and you can get a lot of damage back for your units also think about like whether to open attack or not open attack with Netherglade Collector in hand because sometimes it might be worthwhile developing if you know what your opponent's most likely going to be playing in their deck um, outside of that think of unique ways to level up Callista you can sometimes do some cheeky stuff where depending on how much mana your opponent has you can kind of navigate it to play Callisto alongside Haunted Relic and sometimes like Vile Feast your own unit and stuff. It's kind of weird. There's a few little tricks you can do to make sure Callista flips or um, forcing your opponent to go out of their way to kind of play around it where then they kind of play into it. It's hard to explain, but just keep an eye out for opportunities where you can do a cheeky Callista level up. Also, one other tip I will share, even though in one of the games here, I do get punished for it, but it was because my opponent was playing a card I was not expecting, but if you kind of curve out and you play Callista to the field and you've got like Blight Caretaker and ways to kind of like uh, control your opponent's board as you're attacking, you can actually still swing with Callista. Even if they have a unit to block it, it does have Fearsome, so they sometimes can't block it. Don't be scared to swing with Callista in some matchups as well.
even if it gets traded off and it doesn't flip against aggro decks just swing with the Callista outside of that that should be roughly it guys that was a bit longer than I expected um, hope, hopefully the information comes across um, and it all makes a lot of sense. If you have any additional questions, you can leave them down in the comments. I do respond relatively quickly. Uh, outside of that, if you enjoyed the content, uh, leave a like, subscribe if you're interested in coming back. I will see you next time. Scouts. It's hard to, um. so we don't really want to keep Lyra Caretaker necessarily without an activator. I will keep the Bark Beast though. I think it's too risky to keep Caretaker without anything to actually target with it. Wow. That's a really good hand. I think we still play Curse Keeper. Like, I'm trying to think of like, there's ever a weird play where I just don't do that, but it never makes any sense. I'm gonna skip this attack. What I will lean towards is glimpsing this turn. Or vile feasting. I don't think we want to play, um... I want to play Blyak Hitaka next turn. And to do that, it's actually might be a bar feast. It's gonna pass for now. It'll glimpse now. I was always gonna take the damage here. I could have potentially vile feasted, but then he might have just dragged the spider if I do that right. So if I do that before the play. I just get super punished. So now basically I have Vile Feast here. I Vile Feast first. See if he has the Ranger's Resolve. Okay. Who does not know the name Laurent? Who does not know the name Laurent? Quinn? This is gonna save me a lot of face damage. I thought he may have used the scout here, to, the Valor, to actually hit the Abomination. Place entry. Your boy's in the round. I'm pretty safe to swing with Callista here as well. Apparently not. Okay. You actually run repost? I'm a little bit shocked, guys. I'm a little bit shocked. Sorry, right, I have back to back indoors. So I just survived this turn and then I slapped down double indoors and we're good to go.
I haven't seen Nivea for a while. I actually want a full mulligan here. I actually need like curse keepers more than anything in this matchup or just some form of gas. Even this hand looks a lot better than like keeping Vile Feast and you know Avarosian. I think it's always Omen Hawk to start off with. Let's see if he actually develops here. Nothing escapes my watch. Okay, I'm gonna stop him from swinging. Oh, do you actually play? Do you play Avalanche? I'm, I'm really vibing the Avalanche here, guys. Watch this. Yeah, okay. Makes sense that if he's only running a Nivea, of course he's an Avalanche deck, guys. Of course he is an Avalanche deck. Whew. That's pretty buffed up already. On treats, draws him a Nivea. We just pass here. <laughs> we definitely play the Haunted Relic here, buff up the Endure. We play Butcher as well. Do I Fury now? Do I ever Fury now? Forcing out Vengeance this turn. No. I don't think I want him to play Vengeance this turn. Maybe I do. Wow, I wonder what kind of hand he's sitting on. That seems super bricked out. Like, we always saw this coming. Splinter Soul. I'm getting memed. Probably should have Vile Feasted that. I could have saved my butcher, but I would have lost my spider anyway, so. Yeah. I'll let that go down. I can Vile Feast the egg afterwards. I guess he either has vengeance or he doesn't have vengeance. We'll find out very shortly. He either has vengeance or he doesn't have vengeance. What's the call here, guys? Do I think it's more common for them to have vengeance or more common for them to have avalanche or like a withering whale, etc.? Uh. I think it's just Endure and hope for the best. I guess there was no vengeance. <laughs> Maybe he's not running vengeance, like he's playing Splinter Soul. Twisted Fate and Teemo. Um, okay. I've versed this player before though, I don't think... He's not one to full meme out. Like, if he's playing Teemo and Twist of Fate, it might be for some sort of reason. I 
I guess like you either get to play Teemo or you get to play Thermo Beam this turn. Or Zornite Urchin. I'll be skipping on this attack for sure. Yeah, I'm tanking this. Like, fly the caretaker and we're insane. Like, we're actually insane. Okay, let's drop the Bark Beast. Double Bark Beast on the field usually means one of them gets buffed unless they have exactly Static Shock, which I can counter. I can usually counter that. I'm feeling like a glimpse here. Also, get, yeah, I get quite wrecked by Mystic Shot. But he usually wants to deny the card draw, right? So I should get two buffed up Bark Beasts. Yeah, okay, this is fine. I feel like I should be full swinging, even though he gets like the really good trade with the Investigator. I've got a pretty aggressive hand, so I've got a bit of refill. So I don't mind that trade, even though it looks bad. Timo gets another Brock. It's fine. Is it is it Avrosian Sentry and Elise or is it Omen Hawk and Elise? I think it's Sentry plus Elise. Don't think I need the buffs right now. It's a pretty good red card. Who says I don't Uh, pretty... I think it's an obvious open attack. Eh, double Omen Hawks plus Vile Feast are playable this turn. Perhaps not. <sighs> yeah, it's just open attack here. He might have another... He, he'll have a unit that he can play that can block my Elise. So I'm not going to allow that. He's forcing me to draw my cards. Makes me kind of uh, <laughs> wish I had played these Omen Hawks earlier to get the buffs. We'll float the mana from here. I can't flip a lease, so keep the mana banked up for Fury, Vile Feast, etc. this turn. I'm expecting him to play um, Twist of Fate here for sure. He could also just do this. I can block like this. There's no way this guy plays suit up, right? <laughs> A tribute to the spider god. Just as well. Four three century? I could have probably passed there. Then I'd like to file an equipment request. Another late proof Van Hoffner? <laughs> That's a little bit scary. So this guy is playing some pretty saucy. <laughs> Yeah, I like this open attack quite a lot. You won't suffer long. Now, consider... Do I... Am I just going face here? Or am I fighting for the board still? I think... I'm still fighting for the board in this position. I'm still fighting for the board for sure. Like, I, I just win if I get to, uh... Close your eyes and drift the fuck is that? <laughs> okay, let's flip the elite. What is... What is, what is, what is happening? What is happening? I can't even play Glimpse, I'm too scared. I'm going to take damage. Let me change into something more comfortable. 
Okay, I guess I'm just gonna hope for the best this turn and hopefully he hasn't got Rex. Oh, you just kicked the Rex. He has a Rex in hand. 100%. I'm hoping there's no Mystic Shot in his hand. Okay, now he can't Mystic Shot and play Rex. He's got Rex in hand. There's no way you kick the Rex there. 110%. I have double Vile Feast now. I think we just win. If I stop the teammate from hitting my face. Wow. He should have just attacked. Like... He must not have like lots of burn in his deck because he, he he puts me down so low if he just open attacks. We go down to eight. We have double puff caps. Pretty sure I double ping the uh, Teemo here. That's probably going to save us more damage than the minus one tick here. Like we might, we might have lost this game if I didn't get that double Vile Feast there. So that's kind of a high roll. I lose the spider, but I don't, that, that's no concern. Like I could play the Butcher. Just dies to Rex. Rex is right here, by the way. I'm so confused, guys. He threw away a Rex. Okay. Something for all. I guess I don't have any challenges left now. But I can like fuck up his entire board. Everyone's a garden. I can force him so he can't block the um Elise. Yeah, let's go for it. I got the atrocity in hand. Why are you here? If only had one more mana. If only I had one more mana. Three. Surrender to the melody. You must be trolling. With two cards in hand. <laughs> Ooh. We got him. <laughs> that was crazy close, sir. Why did he kick the Rex? I guess, like, uh, I maybe have Endure in hand. I play, I play, like he does Rex, I play Endure. It's massive. I just open attack next turn. Still, the one thing I don't understand is not the open attack. I must be missing something. 